How did you ever get laid? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, first time, I couldn't tell you. It just kind of happened. <laughs> what, what, was it? Was it the summer of '69? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I am Vin. That is Jordan. That is Hello. Pedro. And you, together at home, helping us form Go Game Voltron. Forget that last week. I didn't forget about you. Hi, YouTube. Demonetize that, you dicks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> LGC cares. Hashtag. Uh, before we get started, we do like see what's going on in each other's life organs. Jordan, what's up, baby? Man, I thought you were well, going to be, like, busy, like, uh, drinking yeah, wine. I'm, I'm so lonely. I was supposed to have a gentleman caller, but they didn't realize that they needed a passport to enter another country. Um, yeah, we were supposed to, Strider was supposed to show up this weekend to uh, go to WineConf. Um, that didn't happen, uh, and I didn't end up going because I woke up this morning, and because I injured my back last week, mm -hmm. I just couldn't move today. I slept on it funny, and so I missed Pierre Loop Guru's talk, and mm -hmm. I'm like, eh, there's no point. Did that that was really this? all I cared about, that. What? There's, there's gonna be, like, video of that, though, right? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. There, there, there probably is, there's probably gonna be, like, they're gonna throw it up on YouTube. Most conferences do that. It would've been nice, because then I could be like, hey, 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 Pierre, you should come on Linux Gamecast. We can do interviews now. Then no. <laughs> Smoke bomb. <laughs> Pedro, what's up, man? Uh, not much, actually. That's great. I pulled, um, I pulled out the, um, Chromebook, uh, from the shelf, it's like, all right, let's do all the updates and test the new um, Christini bits. It's like, oh, it can actually do 3D now on the um, Linux apps. It's still very, very slow. Like, one FPS in uh, Unigen Heaven, slow, but it can do it now. What are you trying to do to that Progress. poor Chromebook, man? You're like, you just want to, <laughs> just want to combust? <laughs> I was just trying to see if it worked properly. It's cruel. Man. That's <laughs> I, 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 I mean, what you got? What you got to do is try to run it on one of those new MacBooks and see if you can touch it afterwards without getting a third degree burn. Right, dude. <laughs> Man, over here at LGC Actual, uh, I did the danger purchase from eBay, and that's called buying a copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio from eBay, period. Don't buy a dongle, kids, unless you're like, hey, man, I don't mind thieving. Ended up getting a legit one. This can't happen, mm. because if you buy a uh, cinema camera, the 4K, or the you know 1080p one from back in the day, they throw these in like candy. And a lot of people are like, oh, here's only Adobe products, so you can get legitimate ones. Turns out this one was, I, was hunt I have a video of me like, Okay, here I am punching this in, and it's going to tell me to eat a bag. And it's like, oh no, oh, it's legit, nice, neat. <laughs> also, this I, show is on Pandora. We, we've uh, opened the Pandora con. James Cameron, why? Big why? Quiet, Doctor Who. Before the <laughs> wait, Doctor I thought Who. that was like a psychological disease that manifested when you were in enclosed spaces after a long period of space. All travel. I know. All I know. Like the horse, it is one Pantera's box. You do not want to open. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you you might get shot in the face while performing. It's the Steam Linux update of the, the week. Rip dime bag. <laughs> but you know what? It's a, it's that time of the month again. Steam hardware survey. Yeah. You know, if 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 you were hashtag blessed enough to get a hardware survey this month, uh, or in the month of the September at least, so you, you contributed to this, and point. yeah, uh, and. <laughs> Apparently, Linux usage is crawling up by not 0.3 or 0.03 percent. So that that's pretty good. Windows usage has gone down by a corresponding amount. Um, <laughs> going going through the hardware, uh, the 1060 seems to be the card of choice across all platforms. But what I find interesting, though, is if you restrict the stats to Linux only, mm -hmm. it's the uh, RX 480 that is the most commonly used video card under Linux by about 0.79 percent. Man, mm -hmm. I'm just happy that somebody else than me bought a 2060. I'm like, yay, brother. <laughs> In, indeed. <laughs> of, of course, all these numbers are complete and utter bullshit because Valve has the actual numbers. This is just people who respond to the survey. Yeah. I don't know, man. I 100% down with this. I, I was genuinely thinking, looking through this, that the number one GPU would be Intel Integrated Graphics. And it's like, nay, it's not. For the longest time, it was. Right. <laughs> the HD yeah, 4000, I think. Yeah. 
Uh, but nowadays, the one thing that's still bothering me a little bit is uh, the CPU um, disparity because yes, Intel's still winning, obviously. But we've seen like all the things saying yes, AMD has finally crossed thirty percent market share, mm-hmm. and then you look at the Steam um, stats, it's like oh, nineteen point seventy two percent. Maybe, maybe some of the people on RA AMD are just like, yeah, I, I, I have like 11 AMDs and uh, from their <laughs> i9. Could be. <laughs> but, yeah, 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 it's a, to, it's uh, significantly different. <laughs> well, you, you, still, you still have to consider that there was like a good decade of Intel kind of being the only option for gaming when it comes to CPUs. Yeah, so those yeah. CPUs are still in circulation. Mm-hmm. Like that is severely yeah. polluting the numbers. <laughs> And you can still get some money. I mean, not everyone immediately ran out and buy AMD. Uh, you know, we didn't, well, except for me. And then Pedro was shortly after that. And Jordan's holding up Team Blue all by himself these days. But- Though, to be fair, uh, That's on Linux, back. If, again, uh, if you filter by Linux, uh, on Linux, you actually see, like, almost 25% of the share is AMD processors. So... Okay, then well, that, that makes a bit more sense. Linux <laughs> users tend to uh, overgeneralization, but the numbers don't like. We, we like an underdog, and AMD was the underdog for yeah. a long time. <laughs> and, I'll, 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 also, I think laptops as well, because you know HD integrated graphics, right? right? Like, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that that again is kind of skewing it because if you're buying a laptop, until recently, really, your choices were Intel and Intel. Indeed. Let's talk about that Steam cut, man. Everyone's got a problem yeah. with it, and they're fleeing to Epic for that smaller Indeed. cut. Indeed. So IGN put uh-huh. out a bit of an article about this. <laughs> Link to it is in our show notes. Full uh, disclaimer, so, I don't like IGN. I don't think any of us do, but they did the work on this. So. They, 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 did, they did do the legwork. Um, so uh, they, th- that legwork revealed that really, with the exception of Humble, Itch, and Epic, 70% takeaway is about the best you can do when it comes to dealing with any of these stores. Itch lets you actually specify your own own uh, percentage cut. Um, Humble does 25, and then they do their charity stuff on top of that. Uh, but everywhere else, including physical retailers, and the one thing they don't re- um, bring into the physical retailer thing is that, you know, that's not, it's not just that cut because it's the unit cost. Uh, they mark it up and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, um, th- th- this whole notion that 30% is excessive is not really true because it's pretty standard. Although, you know, if you're a big company like Rockstar or Activision or whatever, then you can probably go to Valve or you can go to Nintendo or Sony or whoever and negotiate a better deal because, you know, you're a multi-bil- multi-million dollar company and that's how these things roll. Screw the little guy, right? Um, though, here, here, here's, here's the real thing about that, and we're going to talk about this more in depth in this entire Steam section, is that you actually get quite a bit for from Valve's 30% cut, like free yep. Linux support via Proton, mobile streaming infrastructure, and an entire private network for hosting globally accessible game servers, right? So it's not like you're getting absolutely nothing for that cut. There's more value add, I would say, from Steam's cut than there is from Nintendo's or Sony's or Microsoft's or any of them, really. I mean, think of it this way. Valve, here's what you should do. Business advice uh, from Old Man Vin. Offer something I like to call the Epic Tier. Yes, a a new service for game developers. Uh, If you're planning on selling on the Steam Store, you now have the option of the Epic Tier. They're only going to take 12%, and you only get a play button and a store page. Yeah, no forums, no workshop, no Steamworks, none of that. Easy. Can't even, ah, can't even add it to the shopping cart. But, nope. but uh, <laughs> you know what? They're going to be good guy Valve because they just can't help themselves. They're going to give you a shopping cart. Ah, right? Okay, all right. <laughs> but you only have to pay that 12%. Turns out, I don't think developers will be very happy about that. And they're like, no, um, I want everything that Valve offers mm-hmm. and 12%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm totally down for that idea. It's like, yeah, twelve percent, and you get exactly the same thing that Epic gives you, and nothing else. Well, to, yeah, to be fair, I Epic think... also also gives you a giant stack of cash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, this is, I mean, come on, man. If you're, because you're thinking about all these tools and um, services like forums and stuff like that, that's going to help you sell your game. If somebody's like, here's a stuck money. You don't have to worry about if the game sells or not. You're good. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I yeah, don't need any of that. You're going to make that money no matter what. So mm-hmm. you don't need anything else, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Dude, that's definitely a thing. But that 30% goes to some really cool things sometimes. a lot of things yeah. yes. the, the, and this the, one uh, uh, was was say, the, the, the article does also go into detail about how that 70 percent that you do get to keep isn't actually 70 percent because if you're working with a publisher if you have um licensing or distribution stuff then that eats away from your share as well so yeah and transaction fees <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh the big one uh this week which a lot of people were talking about and uh it made myself and uh co-worker dave basically go squee at work was uh valve has decided to uh introduce remote play together and what it is is basically let's say you have a game that supports local co-op and you want to play it with someone who isn't local who is somewhere else in the world over the internet and you want to play the game with them well starting roommate um, you mean your roommate (laughs) maybe uh but yeah starting on october 21st uh or at least that's what the plan currently is it's valve time so we'll be lucky if we see it before the end of october uh the um it, they will introduce a remote play together, which will basically let one person who owns a game that supports local co-op, and that person will then st- basically stream the game to their friends. And uh, they do say that you kind of need like a 10 uh, megabit per second uh, connection to be able to actually make use of this properly. Uh, that's each individual person as far as uh, steam is concerned but yeah you're basically just streaming the video um of of the game that's being played to other people and they get to control the character on your box so yeah this is a very good thing jordan do you want to get a word in of stuff that you wrote in the notes go ahead oh i was just, I was just gonna say um that we were t- we were talking about last week about how um, Valve's remote play stuff for uh, the mobile connection is probably going to be like a fairly substantial base to this because it's uh, it's Steam input, right? It it's gets treated as a controller, so you would connect to your fr- your uh, friend hosting the game and yep. be be able to like remote control as like a player too, which is pretty cool. No, I think it's definitely hundred uh, percent awesome, and it, as you said, Pedro, I mean, it gets interesting when when only one person needs to have the game. Yeah. <laughs> that you're like wait a minute so yeah player two whoever is playing with you that means that the pc you're playing on is going to be responsible for encoding and streaming so you're going to have to have the grunt to do that and the bandwidth to push it out i think you got to keep that in mind and this is all in preparation this is going to be a good data point for valve to start testing that game streaming service they're working on allegedly i don't know i'm the only one yes. alleging that but i'm like yeah probably it would make sense because i'm like it or not everything's going that way death road to canada i'm looking forward to playing that with you psychopaths uh megabyte punch is the other big one that i've been waiting for mm. there's there are so many games that just yeah. only have couch co-op <laughs> that we've, we've been complaining for years why why do you not add online play and once again valve's taking that 30 percent cut and doing the developer's job for them by well, providing this feature welcome yeah. thing uh, one of the developers i follow i forget your name i'm not i'm just blanking right now said yay for once being a lazy developer paid off <laughs> I, I i i will say though this is probably going to be like super janky at first it's going to oh. be oh yeah it, it, it's it's going to be like the initial release of uh charlie murder where you have to like beat people into the other area to get the screen to move stay tuned our streams are going to be very entertaining probably for about a month or two until uh mm-hmm. yeah until things get get settled out we got a new piece of hotness uh proton 411 is up with the dash seven seven <laughs> mine rhymed uh to which i'm going to say uh as always as is tradition where the goddamn batman i'm still waiting on mark of night uh better support controller hot plugging i played around with it. you get the upgrade to dxvk 142 d9 vk to not 0.22 something about icy uh that sounds kind of hot 
Looking forward to that. I did notice, though, a uh, little bit of performance regression in one of the games I was playing around with, Shadow of War. And we're only talking like 3 to 5, possibly 7%. Nothing that you would notice unless you've just been eyeballing the um, Furps counter. But uh, another game, Metal Gear Solid 4, the cornerstone, the only canon game in the entire series. Uh, it broke the ability for that game to go full screen, which was previously platinum on Proton TB. It didn't have an issue, but it did the thing. If you've got a UHD monitor, you know this. You go full screen and you go like, oh, you only get this upper left hand corner of the screen. And haha, LOL, deal with it. Fortunately, Cheesy's uh, 450 in Proton, which I keep installed to the rescue. No issues there. Um, this is kind of the deal we have with wine, though. Fix some things. Other things are going to break. Yeah. Man. And uh, I tried it over here, and uh, I didn't really notice uh, any weirdness from the the shift from 4.11.6 to 4.11.7. Uh, the uh, bit that you mentioned about IC, it's because of the rewired Unity library, which is... If you're developing a Unity game and you're not Milkstone Studios who figured out how to introduce SDL2 to Unity when Unity themselves couldn't do it, use Rewired because Rewired uses SDL2. Th those are the other people that also figured out how to do it and it's available in the Unity uh, asset store. So give for those people money. Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you can do the development yourself. It's pretty cheap for working controls in your game. Yeah. Indeed. It supports everything. <laughs> Indivisible. But New games? Something that uses STL. We do it. So, yes. <laughs> we're going to be talking with the one of the psychopaths, or not the psychopath himself, responsible for getting this over to Linux later on in the show. Just a couple of notes. You know, when did this launch? Beta Tuesday? Officially? Uh, yes. Yeah. Tuesday? Yes. A <laughs> couple of updates, uh, changes to default controller layouts, and. Uh, did, did they fix that achievement page that uh, we turned into a drinking game very quickly into the Tuesday <laughs> they, stream? They did. <laughs> they did. They specifically mentioned the one achievement that kept popping up. Uh, the, it no longer keeps doing that. It only does that when you hit certain uh, milestones. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, you're either almost there or it's like you have like 50 of the things you need to do towards that achievement you get a little pop-up but yeah it doesn't spam you whenever you do it <laughs> nice good to see uh that was like two days after so they're staying on top of that game performs pretty yeah. well stick around for the jericho position more on that at 11 but portal got an update it, it did portal portal 2 specifically Ooh. um now you can now if you're playing with a controller uh and you're using a dual shock this one's covered in elite gamer chalk because skullgirl <laughs> not skullgirl <laughs> indivisible made my hands sweat um yeah uh you'll you'll get uh, you'll get proper uh, glyphs now um there's a material rendering issue uh that apparently was fixed i don't know what that actually is and i didn't get a chance to test it but then when you and i were going through portal 2 mm -hmm. we were running some issues recording it in obs Yes, I'm curious. The, it, there was an update. So backtrack two years ago to whenever that last update was. They flipped a bit. They flipped a switch that caused it to, yeah, if you got it in OBS, it ran like, but like on anything, you were going like 24 to 30. It would first. flicker too. And yeah. yeah it, was, it was just a nasty experience. And this was after we powered our way all, like we had to finish our Portal 2 series but like looping it back through an HDMI encoder in order to finish mm. it. So I'm still doable. I'm glad that they got that uh, sorted. I want to try and see, but Portal 2 for me, I don't know. Where do you land on that with like replayability? I'm like, oh, I've been there, done that. There, there, there's a lot of community levels. So if you okay. want to, if you want to like do something different, there's ample stuff. Uh, and they, they had a pretty active community developing levels and it's all in Steam Workshop. So you can just click and install it. And it's nice and easy. Do you think they're done like patching old games? No, uh, no, 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 they're not. No. Oh, and, uh, we, 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 we got some, we got some gold source updates for, um, for Half-Life and another game. Um, yeah, apparently they're just doing like some, uh, uh, th so this, this is, I think like the second or third time that they've actually updated the OG Half-Life since it's been under Linux. Um, the first one just being, you know, the actual Linux support, but the, they're adding a bunch of like multiplayer fixes, security patches, because, you know, the multiplayer server, uh, is vulnerable. So they got to fix that so that no one can get their system taken over. Um, 
they f they have a couple gameplay balance fixes. I guess I guess it basically got to the point where someone was complaining enough, like Half Life speedrunners were complaining enough that they're like, fine, we'll <laughs> <Yeah>. fix it. <laughs> I don't know yeah, when it comes to like speedrunning Half Life. I'm like, really? It's neat to watch, but I could never. Yeah, that's also of my skill set. It, 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 it's speedrunning is its own thing. You got to be mm -hmm. a special kind of crazy. Speedrunning FPS is is its own own special mm -hmm. breed of nightmare fuel, Pedro. Yeah, and it wasn't just uh, Half Life because. Uh, if you actually look down the bottom, uh, it, they actually have like an update about once a year, except for 2019, because in 2019 they had an update on April 16th, and uh, now they have another update. So clearly they hired someone who's going like, yeah, th those games you guys did, I, I want to fix some bugs. And they said, all right, fine. Dude, well, listen, the, the developers from the uh, Firewatch team, they're like, we would like to do so. They're, they're digging through old code at this point. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Firewatch yeah, 2 part of that the Half-Life engine. Right. Gold yeah, source. Part Fire of source. that old code also happens to include Counter-Strike uh, 1.6, which is, uh, according to many people, of the best Counter-Strike out there. I disagree, Correct. but yes. Uh, the, um, yeah, the... If you actually have a look at the bullet points of what they changed, a lot of that overlaps with the Half-Life changes, obviously. But they did introduce some more multiplayer-specific things, and they uh, actually to try and curb, because it, there's a lot of cheating in Counter-Strike. Again, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, a lot of the things that they did was to, like, introduce new C, var um, C variables and um, just to try and make sure that people aren't cheating just by using legitimate things that the client can do. So like changing the uh, the gamma or the brightness on a per map basis or like trying to get an advantage in any way possible, they they fixed that. So well, yeah. They, Wait a minute. They, they also Wait. changed the uh, scoreboard a little bit too. They added some configuration options so you can see like people's health or health or yes. money or just and you what, can what, set what, it what, to whatever. show everyone everyone's health and money. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not good at the cheating, man. Like gamma and brightness is like uh, I could see how that's done, but how do they even detect that? What if I, what if I have it set before I go in and I'm like oh no? And then you're not setting it in the engine, and that's on hardware ah good so they I can't can really cheat. do anything good. about that yeah you just gotta use a crt monitor and just jack the contrast up a bunch. way back in the day yeah. dude this is how we played like wolfenstein and doom that was the first thing you did like when you got stuck you're like let's crank this contrast up so i can see through to 100 yeah. there we go there's a seam on that wall yep. and once that was on it never went back off it made it too easy man <laughs> penos Pines. Well, no, no, the, the, pine, there's, yes. there's no penis. This isn't rust. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's certainly no penis on display as far as we know, because this one actually looks a bit more uh, cartoony. This is Pine, and it is a survival. They describe it as an open world action game set in a simulated world in which humans never reach the top of the food chain. It's Sharks with one legs, of those man. It's one of those survival RPG type of situations, very much along the lines of uh, Rust, except this one is single player. And it looks... It looks pretty good. And oh, I look, think... Canadians. Mm -hmm. uh, and Floridians. I, I would very much uh, enjoy playing a survival RPG type of thing with crafting elements and whatnot. But all the ones we've had thus far, they're all crap. So, please... <laughs> May this one be good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I kind of just lost it at like the moose versus alligator. Right. <laughs> That's just too funny. <laughs> Dude, um, I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm single player. Steam achievements, full controller. I was just thinking it was going to be more than $24.99. It's currently 10% off, $22.49. What does it take to run 64-bit OS? Hey, man, I have a copy of that uh, laying around. Quad core, 3.4 gigajoules, 8 gigajoules of RAM, 4 gigs of space, and a 970. <laughs> Three and a half gigs of video RAM. It looks very well done, but it also, did anybody, nothing to give it away, but when I see something looks that good, I was like, is this Unity? How slow is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so we, 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 we've seen people squeeze good performance out of Unity, though. So we've also seen people yes. take 
legitimately simplistic games and curb check your 1080 Ti. This is this is true. I it it, <laughs> yeah, there uh, it doesn't look like they're making use of too many stock assets, so I think it might be okay. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. It might, looks might amazing, and yeah. I do hope the performance is uh, right up there as well <laughs> you think it'll be able to run it at you know 120 frames at 144 because i got stream it switch because people watch them i've been fielding those questions hexa trains man <laughs> yeah it's f- f- fucking moon trains man the, the trains and they go to the moon so yeah this this is this is this is a game where you oh, like no, lay tra- two planets of bullshit Fuck when yes. two worlds collide, you have to run a train between them. Hmm. Um, yeah, so, th- so it's 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 a it's a game like. where everything's on a big old hex map, you and you make Pedro. railways. Um, <laughs> and yeah, eventually you make a train to go to space. I guess. But I I just I can't get over that. It's fucking moon trains, man. <laughs> were you there when they built the train to space? Where were you <laughs> when they built that train track to heaven? Um, yeah, it, it, requ- it requires an up. Uh, an up-to-date uh, OpenGL driver, um, and uh, yeah, has, has, uh, it requires just a Ubuntu LTS. So if you have like eight oh four or whatever, this should run. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's de- it's definitely a thing. It's ten bucks, and I don't I don't know. This might this might be a thing if you're like super into games like Ticket to Ride or whatever, but. I'm going to say good on them because I can definitely tell from a distance that, yeah, those are like the hex grids and like, do not get anywhere near that. I'm like, thanks, game. (laughs) No one acts, anybody who's like not into that will not accidentally purchase that. Like, it's a choo choo simulator. Like, no, it's not. Moon choo choo. It's a spreadsheet simulator, except it's not, you know, a rectangle. It's a hexagon <laughs> that's pretty down so um on and off is uh high refresh as in high refresh rate hyphenated i mean i i i genuinely don't know i think that might be a uh, unnecessary hyphen mm. anyway high, yeah. high refresh <laughs> Let, let's hyphen ourselves out of here i'm 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 way too hyphen for this coming up next we got a ass news segment we're talking about atari we're talking about amd we're talking about how the worst way to spend 300 dollars and the best way to spend 300 dollars <sighs> and we're just about ready to start off this uh, very peculiar news segment which happens to be very very long so uh i hope you have a drink dude <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, stay stay hydrated, stretch, because this is going to be a bit of a marathon. Uh, first off, you gotta you gotta help support this show by heading on over to patreoncom Gamecast. We got a bunch of cool stuff available for the Patreons. We do like pre pre super shows and access, yep. so you can get an entire other hour of Linux gaming content. You get Discord access you, if you uh, donate above a certain level. You can get into the show notes and see how the show congeals. It's pretty neat. There's a lot of content there. Ven occasionally puts up some behind the scenes stuff. So if you want to see how the software Sausages made. You can. Speaking of which, we got an Amazon store affiliate link wish list thing that. Um, that's the, listen, man. That's his Latin name. That's that's the technical <laughs> scientific term for it. Um, no, we 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 get we got a, we got a store on Amazon where we sort of put all the stuff that we use to create the show. So if you want to recreate it, you can in conjunction with some of the videos that then puts on the Patreon. We also have wish lists. So if you want to end up on Frank's fuck wall, you want to be his fuck buddy. You, we got one. We got one last spot. If you want to be the last person on fuck wall 2.0. Now, now's the time. Who isn't Mike G? Because Mike G keeps sending us stuff. Um, yeah, um, we, uh, we, uh, speaking of Amazon, we are not speaking of stores. We have our own store for our own merch. If you want to deck yourself out in sick LGC merch, get some stickers, get some. Do we, do we still got coffee mugs? Or we got that, coffee mugs, man. Yeah, we got we got mouse pads. We got T-shirts. We don't have dust store, but we have coffee we, mugs. <laughs> we, got, we got a coffee mug, and you know that we got it. Uh, and I guess we got to thank all the people who are uh, subbing and throwing us bits on Twitch. You're great. It's kind of thank hot. you. You make it all possible. You know, we, we were just talking to a minute ago. I was like, oh, and this show is brought. You know, one thing I really don't like, which I you got to pay the bills, but mm-hmm. you know, you start watching a video. But before that, let me tell you why uh, Pedro's Mattress Shack is the best place in the world. Like, come on, we're not buying that. Mattress Shack, baby. But <laughs> all of you beautiful party patrons, that allows us to establish a budget and hopefully wisely, wisely spend that trust, buddy, that you've given us 
to bring you bigger and better stuff. Like we're trying to do things like we're going to get it nailed down. We're a little wonky tonight because we're rigged up for an interview with a live, this time a live game developer. Well, you know, so yeah. I mean, it won't be as awkward as it was last time. <laughs> so with, it's with not that, that dead game time. developer. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shh, too much, man. <laughs> you guys and gals are awesome. And yeah, with the Discord, if you like hanging out with us on uh, all throughout the week, I'm like, where do you guys go the rest of the time? When we're not on Twitch, uh, that's where we're hanging out on our Discord. Uh, we have IRC that's always going to be open completely free. We got a little hide hill uh, for the people helping us out if you want to come talk to us. We are in there. This is not one of those like, oh, just go fend for yourself. We we interact and do all that fun. Maybe too much. Pedro loves to interact. De- definitely too much. A little bit too much. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, and we have uh, audio only and all that fun stuff. It's brilliant. Stay tuned. More to come. And since we're done shilling, how about we do something a little bit different? Nope. That, well. If you've Wait. been watching the show long Hang enough, on. probably how, you've how seen different? us have... Are, are we talking like six inches different? Or like... I'd rather not be uh, comparing sizes right now. Fine. It, it, it It's way too late in the evening. <laughs> I, 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 but, I, hey. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, th- I think there's someone we need to ask about size. Dude, size we need to. It's something we've been planning on doing for a long time, since the long, long ago, is to finally get some guests on this show, and we've kind of piecemealed a somewhat viable solution together to do that so we can talk to other people because we've been so lonely over here at LGC Island. And the first victim uh, guest we have this week, you know him, you love him, member of Shadowrun, Civic, uh, he's probably done a game or two you might have heard of. I heard of one called Skull Girls. He was responsible for that being on Linux. And there's this new hotness that's dividable by indivisible. It's a... Uh, that's a weird piece of kit, man. That's an interesting game. That's some fun mechanics. Hi Civic, hi Civic Lamps, hi Google Home, spying on Civic. Well, it's, it's my it's my Croft, not not Google Home. No. So so it's 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 Popey who's sitting like hunched over his computer, just watching everything that Civic does. <laughs> I've made changes. It's Google Home now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it so, only so, uh, so Civic, uh, how, how's how's it going? Skullgirls builds specifically. Hang on, now we got you. Take two. What was that? I'd like to point out that I did help with the Skullgirls builds. Humble was uh, were the one actually bringing Skullgirls to life on the next. Well, I, okay, I, cool. I remember a while ago you were talking about learning uh, OpenGL to help out uh, the Skullgirls port. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so OpenGL is a bad it's idea. So like 20 idea. Have you not <laughs> followed this man's Twitter? It's hilarious. Just breakdown after breakdown. Usually against Apple, yeah, in all fairness. Um, but. In all fairness, OpenGL was a good idea at the time in the 80s. <laughs> but back That's, then, there, there were actually uh, less issues with the fact that basically there was one thread and you could actually use only one thread. But with the advent of, you know, modern computing, OpenGL didn't actually track. Hmm. So you, you uh, sp- speaking speaking on the OpenGL topic, you brought it up before we started recording. All right. Was there was there was a reason why the indivisible port did not use Vulkan, and you said it was kind of interesting. So explain yourself. Yes, the uh, the interesting part is because of my dumb, uh, influencible person. I basically raised the uh, the question, should we go OpenGL or Vulkan? And one person at the time that I was actually asking and uh, asking vi- advice to, and he was basically like, yeah, no, don't use Vulkan. That's a fad. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> then Molten VK got, bought, it got basically bought and open licensed by Valve. So iOS, Mac, done. And uh, now Vulkan is basically just about everywhere, including Man, Windows, I think. Who, who didn't see this, though? I mean, if we're going to like uh, pimp out the Vulkan, when, that, I mean, when it was Mantle, that was a bit of a joke. And it was like, AMD, mm-hmm. we did a thing. And then once uh, Kronos got altered, it was like, we got something here. We, we got something that is 
going to work on everything unless you go out of your way to make it not work high apple on your thing so <laughs> and and even even then they've implemented your api in vulcan so <laughs> life yep. finds a way Sucking. man <laughs> Dude, and then so. some enterprising nerds actually re-implemented uh, DirectX on top of Vulkan within Line in ways that <laughs> we couldn't even dream of a couple of years ago. Yeah, and and, and, and basically they... we have like one one perf on Windows versus Linux with DXVK. How the and it, did that and it's act and the the Valve guys are saying that it's actually going to be better. Um, they're 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 saying that they're actually yeah. eking out some slightly better performance with like the experimental ACO stuff than the native DirectX That's just Eleven ridiculous. driver. I love it. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so can 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 you talk a little bit about like what you actually did in terms of like the the technology stuff in terms of like um, what was involved or what what was like the level of your involvement with stuff like Indivisible? Before we get to that, I, I want to roll it back. How do you even get started with this? Because there was a time mm. before any of this that Skullgirls wasn't on Linux, and there were uh, really... there was that whole shtick about uh, the volunteer leaving. Well, they were yes. looking for a volunteer, and <laughs> yeah. how, how do you then... go from like, hey man, minding your own business, to like, oh, what have I got into? Yeah, I poked them on IRC to uh, told them I I like Linux and you guys are uh, are just wanting to, to to do something on Linux. You want some help? That, uh, that was it. They're like, we got one. Well, <laughs> not just one. At at the time, there uh, there were more vol uh, volunteers, but then Humble just came in the, into the picture and actually were serious about it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Humble's been good like that, though, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, but let's, let's Humble, so... since, they, since they were acquired by IGN, I mean... Yeah. Humble yeah. was good like that, man. That's a long time. <laughs> yes. Long, long ago. Uh, but yeah, no, you, you were saying something in uh, Discord, too, about like... Um, the, the the weird memory management stuff you uh you had to do for indivisible i kind of i kind of want to i want to hear about that because it seems like a funny story that yeah, yeah. i am curious um, about that because i noticed in the system requirements it's like if you've got eight gigs of ram make sure you get eight gigs of swap there brad <laughs> yeah uh that's on me that is totally on me um again for the record uh the i uh, i do this because i like it um but basically um DirectX doesn't have issues with multi-thread. Essentially, uh, you can have multiple threads and you can create uh, textures from multiple uh, multiple threads. You can theoretically, with proper coding, uh, do uh, rendering from multiple threads into the, the rendering context. The issue with OpenGL is across multiple platforms, Sharing resources across threads is, at, at best, an exercise in getting yourself crazy. <laughs> at worst, impossible. How is so it, are the legends of OpenGL documentation as bad as we hear? Like, mm. uh, not just that. It's basically nigh impossible to actually do multi-threaded rendering in a proper and sane way. Hmm. So, 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 it's, it's, so it's a bit of like a OpenGL Necronomicon. You gotta like surrender your sanity to imbibe the knowledge. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you're act, uh, you're, you're implying I still had some sanity left. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. Like maybe a thimbleful. <laughs> nah. Okay. No? So, so I'm more, about more round two, seriously, man. Uh, bas uh, basically, one of the things I had to do is basically load data on one thread then tell the main thread, okay, I need some space for the GPU, give me that. And then juggle between threads for OpenGL so that I can actually load stuff in the background. But it's not a true background, but it is. So that, 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 that's kind of interesting. Did you do any testing on like Optimus or Bumblebee or Prime enabled laptops for this? Cause like that seems like that would that's kind of doubling the memory copy operations because like know, uh, Prime right? Prime already does that, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ish. Uh, Ish. No, technically Prime would well. Uh, I know what you're uh, I know what you're saying, but yeah, no, uh, that does I don't think it works that way. Right? No? Like if you if you go with Prime, 
uh, and you basically add, for example, activate a game in a, into your say, your discrete graphics, it would still copy memory from CPU to GPU. So it would still use a memory bus to copy from system to graphics. I think. Right, but that that doesn't that happen a second time because what it does is it, it'll actually like do the rendering. It'll it'll load the memory in on the dedicated GPU and then copy it back to the iGPU, which is connected to the monitor. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, when you do the rendering on the GPU, then it's just a uh, I think frame quote unquote swap. It just sends a render mm -hmm. a rendered frame into a frame by a frame buffer that the iGPU will then display. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I think. Pedro, your so, turn. So, yeah, one of the things uh, that I noticed is that basically whatever controller you throw at Indivisible, it seems to pick it up automatically. So did you use SDL? Uh, did you look at the lib folder? Nope, I did not. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, we use SDL. <laughs> nice, very good. <laughs> is, that, is that used on uh, all platforms I, or just, um, just Linux? The what? Uh, Linux and Mac. Linux and Mac, mm. oh, good place to okay. use them. <laughs> to maintain one's sanity. No, that's brilliant. It is, yeah. Because if I had asked that question like two years ago, there was uh, initially quite a bit of resistance to using SDL, especially SDL2. And I'm like, but just use this thing. It fixes all the things. Like, no. Uh, well, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We will not say that There's actually a bit of news coming up about that. I will not say libraries fix things. However, SDL simplified things a lot. So mm -hmm. it's magic. It fixes everything. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I saw a uh, while ago you posted that picture that you were trying the old uh, original Xbox Duke controller. Did you keep that? Did you keep testing with that? Uh, no, I ended up going going for the longest time with an Xbox 360 wired controller. Ooh. Then, because of some personal reasons, I went with this one. What's up? Uh, yeah. PlayStation 4DS. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. We're all part uh, of the same yeah. click. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're all separate individuals. <laughs> Yay. Let's Hail see. Sony. <laughs> Hail Sony. <laughs> and then just for the uh, just for the helks, uh, hell outs of it. Oh, oh the, the, the PlayStation OG. One. Oh, the OG yeah. PlayStation I bought. I actually bought the PS1 Classic just for the two controllers. I was going to ask you if that thing came with a fixie, man. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, know. Good. I never actually booted the, uh, the micro console. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I don't even care. There was method to his madness, Pedro. Come on, I can respect that. It's okay. It was Fair 20 enough. bucks, so... <laughs> Man, so, you get this uh, done, Skullgirls is done, it's shipped. We didn't have any issues with that, really, performance-wise. I mean, we were able to run that even on our systems back when at UHD. Yeah. We, I mean, <laughs> studio fighting is well done. It was responsive. Wait, you managed to run it in, in 4K? No. Dope. I mean, I had a 980 at the time, so it was doable. Yeah, I I'm, 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 I'm at the time, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious though, like how how much carryover like was there between uh, the work you did for Skullgirls and Indivisible? Answer that. Answer that. That that picked up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how, how how much how much carryover uh, was there between like the work you did well, in, on Skullgirls versus Indivisible? Like, I think a way to you... throw it was it the same engine or engine in, like type device yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah uh the base engine is yeah. still the z engine uh okay. the graphics were uh, the graphics are a bit different uh, which is why i actually had to code the the open gl part uh, hold, 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 hold on I gotta, I gotta stop you right there as a, as a canadian i have to ask you is it z engine or z engine v engine was made in the u.s so i have to say z mm. you, you so you don't call it z z top <laughs> Pedro, as as our only um, person from Britannia, what what is your ruling? Z or Z? I hear British people say both, so <laughs> mine's a solid meh. <laughs> it's a meh. Nice, but but sorry, cont continue. See, that's how so, you get someone um, to lose their train of thought, Jordan. Yes. yes uh, <laughs> 
one thing I meant to ask, you said that uh, you had that whole thing about uh, Vulcan, but did you actually get started with Vulcan and like poke at it to see if it would be at all feasible? Uh, well, I mean, the engine right now runs uh, runs over OpenGL 3.3 core, so obviously Vulcan is doable. Okay. Because, because Vulcan is basically DirectX 12, or or at least uh, Vulcan and DirectX 12 are of the yeah, same... Yeah, they're based on Mantle, yes. <laughs> uh, same base principles and ideas. So I'm assuming that Vulcan is a very doable proposition. Also, to be a complete nerd, I did uh, explore running uh, Indivisible over OpenGL ES. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so that some enterprising nerds could use some other libraries to uh, to run, like any graphics score, uh, mm -hmm. over something that takes OpenGL ES and runs in, it runs it into Vulkan. Exhibit A, Flibit's little post like a, a month ago, yeah. running Fez <laughs> over Angle. Hmm. Dude, so what we're thinking about this uh, is uh, Indivisible going to be on the Switch? Uh, still in the works. We have the uh, Lab Zero doesn't have anything in any date to announce. Because, um, yeah, it wasn't like digging for information because I assume that would be done with the Vulcan, wouldn't it? Yeah. No. I mean, no it's problem. that uh, proprietary <laughs> NVIDIA slash Nintendo Vulcan stuff. N yes. And NVK. <laughs> Yes. Uh, NBN and no comment. Yeah. So I I, I I got a question for you. Which which game as a game do you like better, Skullgirls or Indivisible? Ooh. Personal preference. Yeah. Yeah. Not representative of Lab Zero at all. Big big disclaimer. Right. So Sophie's choice. Yeah. <laughs> You're making him choose between his children, man. Honestly, He's a monster. Indivisible. Oh. All right. Okay. And, 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 and any particular reason? More, yes, single player. Mm. I am toilets at fighting games. I like Skullgirls. I love the soundtrack, the 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 vibe of the graphics, the, the quote unquote dark deco vibe, the jazz. Uh, the theme song for Big Band is. I just love it. Magnificent. Uh, I like Skullgirls, but I definitely had that reaction of like, this is neat. This is an excellent fighting game. Man, I'm too old to be any good at this. <laughs> exactly. <Combo juggle. laughs> I love everything about Skullgirls, but I cannot play it properly to save my life. That that's me in Dark Souls. Is I love everything about it, but like that game, the game's mechanisms and I do not mesh at oh, all. Man. Whereas with Indivisible, there is a story that I find funny. Uh, f funny, sometimes sad. The graphics are cool. Yeah. Uh, the, the the soundtrack is basically at least really good. If not, okay. uh, if not actually, pre if not, if not reaching like the levels of awesome. Okay, did you actually finish Indivisible? Nope. I actually wanted to not finish it until it was actually released, just to keep okay. the fun of playing it. Oh, oh right. that type of finished is like, oh, time to ship a product. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> as, 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 as opposed to like, this is broken, this is broken, this is broken, I gotta fix this, gotta fix this. Is this a job? Yeah, QA, man. Yeah, de devel <laughs> development doesn't care if it actually <laughs> works. It just does yeah. a build, we're good. One thing I learned about Indivisible, and we had a great time with it on Pedro's stream, was the game seemed, uh, well, at least according to the achievements, it was incredibly well funded. 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 <laughs> Funded. Funded, funded. <laughs> funded. Okay. Funded. <laughs> what Go on. Why did the game do that? <laughs> Explain. <laughs> oh, oh, that bug. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. It wasn't quite, quite a bug. It was basically, that's a an achievement progress. Hmm. That's it. That was just kind of interesting because we were getting funded three times and three times. We had an entire stream of it to the point where we were, um, we made a drinking game of it. Your achievement <laughs> was getting funded. 
<laughs> no, people well, were so, getting drunk. We're trying to stop alcohol yes. just one game at a time, and this was not helping. So, uh, you destroyed some livers that time. <laughs> before, before the interview started, you brought up something interesting. To you, it was like not quite a labor of love, but a labor of sanity. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I found that really interesting. I just need something to do, basically. Hmm. Hmm. Idle hands okay. of the devil's <laughs> work, Jordan. Yeah. There, 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 there's a lot more heartfelt response when I previously asked the question. This is the very truncated <laughs> one. Yeah. If you, may, if you must know, basically, I don't like not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, might as well actually put the, put my time, put my time to be doing something useful that I like and that I'm learning something while doing it. Mm -hmm. It's called a hobby, Jordan. Yeah. Nah. Jordan Jordan's unfamiliar. Well, you lifting weights and hurting your back is a hobby, so you have that. That's true. <laughs> Put, ro ro roll it, rolling dice and murdering dragons is also a hobby. No, no, no. That, that's, that's a lifestyle, man. Come on. I can be both. Yeah, a little column A, column B. All right. That's pretty cool, man. Um, yep. do you, what's up next for you, though? I mean, at what point do you think you're going to be like, all right, I'm out? Uh, I'm gonna get a new hobby. It's called bonsai. Um, I tried that once. It didn't go so well. I dated a girl that did that, and I was like, "That's tr tree torture, man." <laughs> yeah, it's just clipping really teeny tiny trees. It's false hope. I mean, she's not. Oh, I, th I, I thought you were talking about Bonzi Buddy, like the 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 purple monkey spyware thing. No, dude, I'm still talking about D and D. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't yeah, sure if it was bonsai thing. or banzai. So yeah. Namco, <laughs> banzai, Namco, brand yes. new company, trees with your video game. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so Civic, what, what, what's next on the DACA? What can we look forward to seeing from you? Honestly, pff, I don't even know. No. Mm. Good times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, I just do things, and if there is something, you'll know. Follow. What, what's your Twitter? Shameless self promotion. Uh, Civic, if you haven't something. guessed by now, it's Cybic. Uh, <laughs> Is that Cybic. how you pronounce it? Cybic. Okay. Cybic. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. I silent. Cy I I. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful people, give Cybic some love for taking the time for joining us, testing them on a system that I was positive was going to explode, and it only caught fire just a little bit. Um, well, I mean, there's fire in the background, so basically, yes, it exploded. No, that, that's a video. The it's always on fire. That's mm -hmm. our secret. That's my point. <laughs> it's like the Hulk, but flaming. Yeah, okay, Jordan got it. I'm sorry, all right? I'm actually not, but whatever. No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> Pedro doesn't apologize. And on that premature bombshell, back to the news. And that was Sibic or Cybic or however he says it. I don't know. I, I don't ask questions. So C Cybok. let's uh, He's Spock's brother. Spock. Bark. Yeah. <laughs> let's Bark, get Bark. on with the news proper, shall we? All right. Fine. <laughs> let's do it. Fine. We have to actually do a podcast. All right. Open TES Arena, not 10 0. So someone looked out into the vast expanse of the internet said someone's doing an open source re-implementation of Morrowind someone's doing an open source re-implementation of Daggerfall war Elder Scrolls 1 I must fix this there is a void that must be filled and lo and behold uh, Afritz has done this um, right now they've got uh, wilderness generation and auto mapping working you can do go from cities to wilderness um, they're still working on loading the original sprites um, it's still not very workable in a state but i mean it it is what it is this is the beginning of the project um they're they're nowhere near as far in as say uh, uh daggerfall unity or open morrowind but they're they're starting they're starting with the engine re-implementation so uh you can give that a look it's on github available for your perusal uh yeah it's 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 written with some good open source technology so you don't have to worry about platform restrictions right 100% man. I mean, it's C++ and it's using, we're going to talk about this. Uh, well, you just heard about that SDL2 cross platform. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> MIDI for music, open AL, uh, for sound. Yeah. Good times. No actual gameplay yet though. Unfortunately, Pedro. Womp womp. Yeah. It, 
And at this point, they, they are very clear. It's like, yes, this is like very early days. We have, you can see things happening on screen and you can move around. Oh, that's it. But yeah, like Jordan already mentioned, it's like, oh yeah, Elder Scrolls 2 II and 3 have open source re-implementation, so might as well. And, um... It's still not the uh, open source, uh, the open source engine re-implementation that I'd like to see because I was very much looking forward to ever since OpenMW um, started actually g getting going. How about some Oblivion? No, Skyrim. And to be fair, oh. Well, Oblivion also includes uh, Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas, so Oblivion, Skyrim, please. <laughs> now, so, someone saying? just needs to use OpenMW to recreate Fallout 2. You, all I'm, I'm hearing is you don't want to play Skyrim with Vulcan. I wouldn't be opposed to Skyrim with Vulcan, actually. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, technically you can with D9VK. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Or d just Dix Vix with the uh, Legendary Edition or whatever they called it. Hey, maybe by the time that rolls around, you'll be able to play Skyrim on your brand new AMD-powered Nook Nook. Yeah, so this is from uh, fanlesstech.com. Links to all this stuff in our show notes. There is an AMD Nook coming soon. Now, Nook is a Aww. registered trademark of Intel, so it's not going to be called that. You can't call it Kun. I'm going to eject button, eject button, uh, eject button. Seriously, all right, where's um, the Spock button? <laughs> yeah, so so the, this, this story is all like, the desktop is dead. Long live the desktop. I am I am the desktop. But, you know, the, art, the article is right in the sense that... Full computers that are not in like a relatively small, small form factor, like these massive space heaters that we have next to us, um, <laughs> are becoming less and less common unless you, you know, need to heat your house or play video games or do like actual development, design or content creation work. Um, most people are actually relatively happy with uh, having a tablet or a cell phone or just like a small Chromebook or whatever to do most of their computing. So um, this is definitely a market segment that is waiting to be tapped up. People who need something with a little more horsepower than a tablet, maybe they need, want a, a keyboard and a monitor attached to it, but they don't want to pay the full PC premium and they don't want a laptop because they hate laptops. Um, but what, what I find interesting too is that uh, when, 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 it, when it comes to these sort of small form factor computers, Guys like us kind of want them too. Like, I wish they were cheaper so I could have like a network of really tiny like x86 computers to do mm. stuff like. Yeah. Um, but 100% uh, the, on that, yeah. man. Well, when we have the Pedroplex and the Jordanplex, and I was like, well, we'll do that with Nook right up until I get into those price tags. And like, no, uh -huh. you can build a <laughs> lot of computer for some, but people like the little small computers for some reason, man. Mm hmm. And this one is really, really tiny. I mean, I, I never actually got to play with uh, a Nook proper but i'm looking at like the picture size comparison with the raspberry pi and it's like that's about another half of this pcb off to the side as well so that that's tiny that's mm -hmm. for ryzen system or whatever embedded version of ryzen that happens to be running that's pretty good now the the article the article does bring up that um, ASRock does have um, some already uh, present Ryzen embedded offerings available. Um, if you yeah. were one of the poor suckers who was waiting for a smach to show up, uh, you're also getting one of those Ryzen uh, embedded chips. <laughs> um, but with our next story, you're not getting many. You get it with your Hotori. <laughs> Dude, all right. Check it out from the register. Game over, man. Game over. Atari VCS architect quits project. Uh, claims he hasn't been paid for six months. Retro console is a mess. May never launch. Sources allege. Uh, Captain Obvious. You don't really have to allege this. Uh, we kind of mentioned, I think, like two weeks ago. The guy's like, peace out. I'm done. And, of course, the uh, cats behind the Atari is like, nah, man. Tis but a scratch. Pay no attention to the mm -hmm. man behind the curtain. Well, Brad... Turns out uh, those billions in crowdfunding kind of disappeared, man. Uh, dude hasn't got paid. And he even brought out, he's like, yo, man, I'm getting cash for this. I went and did my own company thing that I'm working on now because, you know, daddy's got to eat. And by the way, it looks like they were cheaping out even before he tapped the peace out button. It's like, okay, we'll do the custom Linux OS because that's the reason we were talking about it. Now, like, now they decided not to do that. Yeah, it's not custom Linux. It's going to be... Probably um, Android. 
they do say it's going to be like a standard Linux distribution. That's what the article says. I Arch. have my doubts. <laughs> but uh, if that happens to be the case, at least we know that it can, in fact, run proper Linux. And once again, the motherboard that they showed a while back, uh, that actually looks like um, it could be a very interesting form factor if you're just trying to get a Linux box going in some manner of case that isn't just your typical uh, PC case. And yeah, like Ven was saying, remember like two weeks ago when we mentioned the story that they said that, oh yeah, that person that's not going anywhere despite having started uh, his own company, that was this person. Yeah, so as, that was as it turns guy. out, it's all for naught. <laughs> if you hope to get an Atari, whatever the hell it is, VCS, mm -hmm. you, may, maybe maybe start smoking some PCP and you'll get a hallucination. I don't like dealing out the bad news for this, but this what we've uh, anyone who's backed this to the tune of three million dollars, mind you. Yeah. Um, the only thing they've actually shown were some three D renders, and I think there was a hollow shell. They're like, yeah. No, they did have the PCB, uh, like, oh. the day after this dude up and noped. They okay. showed, oh, we have the PCB in now. Look, here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any faith in that. And I, I don't say that with any joy whatsoever. It would be nice to have a little, nice little general purpose, you know, embedded Linux box that you could make it do things. But, yeah, yeah. The, the nostalgia <laughs> train has derailed on that 100%. But uh, I do want to throw this in. A little bit of a PSA, a buddy of mine told me about because he was like hey man you talk about the video games and stuff and i'm like yeah he's like i get free games i'm like do tell so the u.s department of veteran affairs has a thing called games for grunts so it's free games for veterans military and their families and it's first come first serve uh game companies can donate keys and we're talking new stuff like tekken and cooking simulator uh xbox game passes and it is available uh eligibility is determined through id third-party identity verification and you really just have to create an account at games for grunts dot man that's long it'll be in the show notes just just do a search <laughs> for that I just wanted to throw that out there for my brothers and sisters. And they'd be like, hey, man, that, that'd be nice. That'd be pretty cool. This needs to be a worldwide thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a comment there I'll keep to myself. Up next, Pedro has a new thing. <laughs> yes, I did a thing for a change. Uh, and you may have seen a couple of weeks ago, I did a stream on uh, El Cheapo, that uh, PC I put together for around 300 pounds. And it's, uh, yeah, I in the stream, I ran through a bunch of the benchmarks to get an idea and to give everyone an idea of the kind of performance that they could expect. And then I actually ran the numbers and I did the benchmarks properly this time around. And yes, it is... Except for um, maybe like Metro and Metro 2033 Redux and uh, Deus Ex, it'll play just about any of the other games that I threw at it on Ultra in and around 60 FPS at 1080p. And yeah, uh, it also happens to uh, do very well when it comes to like Proton games, like at least the whitelisted ones. It actually runs most of those on high or ultra settings at 1080p very, very well. May not be able to do so well with newer AAA games if you have wild mode enabled in Proton, if you can get those games running at all. Eh. <laughs> hmm. So what yeah. was your conclusion? You, you got this done. You have a 300 pound gaming rig. Is it, is it really going to get used or are you like, okay, that experiment over next? Uh, yes. Yes, it is going to get used because now it's my tinker box. It's, uh, I, I wanted a desktop that I could tinker with and actually have something that I could try things before I apply them on this box that I'm using right now. Uh, and this one uh, seems to be doing the job very well. I also loaded the uh, Mfutex kernel and the ACO version of Basa since it's got an, R an RX 570. Uh, and those are working. Kudos Valve, very good. Uh, but yeah, the, the performance didn't really change all that much because it's still very much reliant on RADV for the Proton games and uh, Radeon SI for the uh, OpenGL bits or the AMD GPU using the OpenSI open source one. 
But yeah, it the performance was much better than what I expected. And again, it it was mostly bought off eBay for like three hundred pounds. Everything, it it performs very well. Very good. Steam, like um, just casual games, right? Nothing. Uh, if you have a look at the uh, the benchmarks, I, I'm like... looking at the benchmarks, but anything <laughs> under 1080p 60 is I'm not touching it. Uh, well, yeah, the, then you won't be touching Deus Ex or Metro 2033. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> but I wouldn't be trying to because... play either of those with a controller either. <laughs> well, to be fair, Metro 2033, that is an issue that that game has with Mesa specifically, because the game runs much better if you have uh, an NVIDIA video card. But yeah, in Mesa, the performance is poop. Uh, on the AMDs and Deus Ex, the performance is poop all around. So, <laughs> Jordan, do you have any thoughts since allegations or? Uh... No, I'm just appalled by the number of commas I had to remove from that article. Aww. You said two dozen. Was was that accurate? <laughs> well, in fairness, I put seven additional ones in there before you opened it. Mm. I don't know. Jordan introduced a couple of extra typos that I still need to go back and. Uh, Fix. That's the secret for the for, for the secret game. <laughs> um, Stadia news, ladies and gentlemen. It will be faster and more responsive than local gaming. Ha <laughs> ha. At least that's what the Googs want you to believe, because they're using Moon Magic, aka negative latency. It's going to be more responsive than local gaming. In a year or two, according to VP of Engineering. Um, yeah, this is our future, and it's all going to work great. we we'll wait two years, then we can all throw away our computers and buy, like, an NVIDIA Shield and be done with the whole thing, man. Uh, we'll just be... Which one? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Now that we've cleared that up. I don't think this is going to be a year or two away, man. Like, what they're talking about is something I experienced during the Stadia beta. Because, you know, I had that for a couple of months and, you know, on our not horrible connection, it worked fine, even though it was only streaming at 720p. And I was like, yeah, it should be 1080. But if I, if I was playing with, you know, just like the x controller or something like that, didn't really notice it. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I would expect with a controller. But as soon as I used a uh, keyboard and gerbil, there was a little bit of taste. I don't. I'm not going to say a taste of what 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 the rock's cooking right now, but there was a little bit of a preemptive or a you know, it's like ah, you're you're doing something to my movement to try to compensate for the just get to deal with network lag. Even if we're going over fiber optics, which are not the speed of light, but pretty damn close. Uh, you, at best, you're going to be dealing with what man, like fifty milliseconds, something like that. Something, something, where something the server is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're, 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 they're saying that they're going to be implementing like a couple of solutions, like um, increasing and decreasing frame rate dynamically to like create the illusion of a more seamless experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see how it's ultimately implemented because uh, if, if Google's all about this machine learning solution stuff. So if as over time, it gets more and more samples of how people play games and how people play specific games. Uh, it may actually get better over time to the point where it's basically imperceptible, even even if you are looking for like weird hiccups. But that might be that may take some time to actually you know make make those connections and enable that to happen in like a real world scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can imagine how uh, frustrating and. I mean, I know exactly how frustrating it is for when you have a shooter and you go around a corner and you still die and then you watch the death cam and you see someone shot you like two meters before you even got to that corner and you died right there and you immediately call bullshit because it is bullshit. (laughs) So here's the thing about that, though, is that... uh, at least, at least from a shooter perspective in Stadia, you're playing it with a controller anyway, so your experience is already tainted with that. Um, you're not going to be, yes. you're not going to be, you're not going to be wasting, and you're not going to be using a mouse. At, but at my point is, even yeah, even games that you're playing locally, and you're just you have it local on your machine, other people have local on theirs, and you're playing multiplayer, and that happens, and you immediately call bullshit. 
So imagine an entire system designed like from the ground up loser, man. to bullshit. <laughs> no, you know, it's what, just what you actually do is bullshit. <laughs> Rawr, kitty. Um, <laughs> you just need a generation or two of kids not playing it on hardware. If they get used to the streaming from day one, then they'll never notice that there was never another way. You don't want to be primitive. What if you know if they're going to be using AI for prediction? What if, what if you have like this scenario, man? Like, okay, so, so you're about to shoot someone. AI is like, okay, I can look at this, this is way in the future. This is just speculative bullshit. So they're rendering everything in the cloud. They got their things. So I'm like, you could shoot here, 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 and here. Since I'm just delivering video, I can deliver you like a multi stream video. So I can give you like four or five streams that I can flip between. Like, oh, you're actually going this way. I've already pre-rendered that scene. Click over to that. I but don't, then you need to do that for everyone who's do playing that game at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we're also talking oh. about Google. Yeah, <laughs> it, would, it would also require, like, per-game analysis as well, because that, this is, like, yeah. very specific functionality. And even sim games in a similar genre will behave very differently. So, again, this is all Google Moon Magic. They have, like, the Panopticon Matrix underneath the Google X Lab, mm -hmm. which is basically just a giant cyber brain that's facilitating all of this, and is slowly biding its time until it takes over the world, and we end up in an I have no mouth and I must scream scenario. So, step one. Uh... Ten years from now, yes or no, uh, we're not going to have gaming rigs like us personally. We're just like, no, no, this is, I'll log into we'll pop in a AR, VR, some yeah, you got to and... jack in the matrix, right? Like, you can I have both. like the hardware. Yeah, but you're going to be one of those people with old hardware, old current hardware in your garage, and you're like, ah, I collect yes. things that I'll never use. No, I, I, <laughs> I don't I, collect I, it, I, I just like it. <laughs> I, I'm 100% calling Pedro being like, this new augmented reality Matrix game sucks, it keeps leaving directories in my brain, and they're not hidden. <laughs> Oh, no, dude. <laughs> I keep hitting that folder whenever I'm trying to access my memories. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, of course, he's, he's already stroked the fuck out, man. So he's doing all this communicating with his pinky. Yeah, no, he's office. like he's like Captain Pike from the Menagerie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, OK. Gotcha, man. Hedge Wars. It's not dead yet, baby. No, it's not. In fact, uh, it's so not dead that they've actually released the uh, 1.0 version. Uh, and it's release party time, according to them. Uh, this came out on Wednesday. And yes, they say that Hedge Wars version 1.0.0 has been released. And it is a major release because uh, compared to version not, um, not 9.25, uh, it is mostly just a cleanup. Uh, basically, all of the little niggles that they had with the previous version, they've been fixed. And that's good. That's very good. And it, as is tradition when it comes to open source games, um, 1.0 means that they feel reasonably confident in their work to say that, yes, this is 1.0, but it doesn't really mean anything because you can still expect the exact same uh, development team and level of uh, commitment from them that they've had all this time. So, yeah, I really do hope that they keep working on it because open source worms. Yeah, you, you, you know, you know what else 1.0 means is that now it's eligible yeah. for the chair acquisition. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, it's it been is. it's been a while since we've had a non super tux card game <laughs> right. that was open source on the chair acquisition. Hey man, that's so a big stay, step stay in an open source project's life. We're like, oh, it, it's 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 like it's bar mitzvah. <laughs> but then again, I mean, there's something to be said about like not point not nine 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 dash. <laughs> Dot, dash final dot right. final dot really dot doc X CV, dot rar right, right. dot this time for real dot, dot one <laughs> yeah I say good on them a uh, hundred percent so uh, GTA is a thing right not GTA it five. is the only okay I've, the when they released uh, GTA the original for free um, I got that and did ran and one and I like scooted around for a minute and the only other experience I have with GTA was GTA Vice City because I helped someone get it up and, and apparently it ran with wine way back in the day, man. And I yeah, kind of moved around. I was like, okay, that's the thing. But uh, to satiate your undying hunger for GTA played with the Unity engine, I know you have a very strange hunger. Uh, this is now a thing. GTA ASM, there's a Linux desktop build of it. 
Uh, why? Is, is this a good thing? I'm a little scared. It's San Andreas. I'm, I'm, yeah, as far uh, yeah. as GTAs go, this one's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this this was the one that came out after Vice City. Um, yeah. yeah, but this this is done in Unity. It was, it was, we had the same sort of question when uh, Daggerfall, Daggerfall Unity came up. Mm -hmm. It's like, why why yeah. Unity? Whatever. This the guy wants to learn Unity. This is a good enough way to do it. It's sure. also available uh, on Android. It's true. Um, it's actually, unity. the the the, uh, the work for uh, this release, which is version three point two, basically makes it build out of the box under Unity under Linux, um, and they accomplish that by adding case sensitive file system support, which is nice. Although I got I gotta say though, like why is this continues to be like a stumbling point for so many developers that you know you have to keep your casing consistent, mm -hmm. and that's just too much to ask, I guess. <laughs> Listen, man, I didn't choose the Windows life. <laughs> I didn't choose the Fat32 life. The Fat32 life chose me. Hey, don't worry. They're working on making EXT4 case insensitive because everybody's dying for that. Oh, man. Well, it can already do file lookups insensitively, so yeah. <laughs> insensitively? Like within insensitively. Oh, I like the other word better. There, There is an incentive for it. Dude. Um, Multiplayer speaking, works with this. Ooh. Yeah, you can well, do the original dedicated... game didn't have multiplayer, so that's good. <laughs> Life hack. Wouldn't I try that? <laughs> Maybe you gotta find a cheap copy of San Andreas though. Is, is there an expensive game. copy laying around somewhere? It goes on sale so often on Steam. It's, I was yeah, surprised yeah. they didn't have it because I wouldn't like looked at all my humble keys. I'm like, no, I got Vice City and Well, yeah. it's Rockstar. They don't do Steam keys anywhere outside unless you buy the game on Steam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I got them through yeah. Humble Bundle. So I got a couple of GTA games. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Open Open Gothic is a thing. It's another open source engine re-implementation. Uh, this one is open uh, implementing open uh, Gothic two in an open source way about it. Um, and all, lo lo and behold, um, they have um, they have finally implemented uh, some sort some form of Linux support. Although it's it's a little janky. There's a uh, in the, in the highlighted post in our show notes. Uh, they're like. By the way, VirtualBox doesn't support Vulkan, so don't expect to see full Linux support in the next release. So guys, guys, please, 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 please do not fucking do this. Do not do all your Linux development in a virtual machine, especially if you're making a game, because people don't actually run games in virtual machines. They usually run them either on a separate partition for a dual boot, or they just don't have Windows installed altogether. So you kind of want to make sure that it works with the real hardware. No. And you know, uh, the real hardware doesn't really cost you all that much because do you know what does run Vulkan? Uh, a $50 Ivy Bridge slash Haswell laptop that you can get on eBay? That'll do Vulkan. It'll do Vulkan and it'll do Linux much better than VirtualBox does. <laughs> I don't but, know, man. But, uh, you you got to look at this. just the simple fact, man. You, you're just another demanding, toxic Linux user. I didn't I'm, even swear on that one. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have the time or the energy to go all the way down to the Linux store and buy the Linux computer, okay? You go on eBay. It's in your computer. God nope. damn it. Impossible. <laughs> on, well, there, 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 there is another gem hidden away at the bottom of this thread because they're like, we got we got the X11 support working. And the the, the question comes up, why, 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 why no SDL2? Um, oh. And yeah, the, the SWIC actually laying down the truth. Dude. If you value your sanity, use SDL2. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is, there, like, because he's, he's basically saying, like, yeah, you should use SDL2 because then you don't have to write all of this X code. And there is, when you think about it, there really isn't a compelling reason to not use SDL2 unless you want a faster path to hair loss because you're just going to yes. be ripping it yes. out of your hair. <laughs> well, I mean, it was like, it, there, there was an attempt at a rebuttal, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, there, there was there, an attempt. Yeah, there, oh there, yeah, there was. practically the X11 code is already done, and then Swig came back. He's like, "Yeah, great. Now test it on all of the window managers and all of the desktop environments, uh -huh. or you know, don't and add SDL too." Oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, re re um, he re-implemented for Wayland <laughs> as well. Wayland, you're right. <laughs> Like, did, yeah. you, did you think about all of the, those? Uh, good, did you have plans for all that? I'm like, eh, no. Uh, because, <laughs> guess what? That's a single point of failure. Yeah, yeah. Just, just doing it. It's like, well, <laughs> it'll work with X. It would, 
do, I've tested it with these. It, it's like, it's a big honking because people in virtual come, box, dude, hard mode. It's going to really three lines. Remember that Oculus presentation, three lines nope. to show a window. Listen, hey? <laughs> carnage 3d. We did, we did this in the wrong order because we should have brought this up before we talked about San Andreas. Yeah, I mean, this is a GTA uh, open source engine re-implementation. And uh, yes, I guess this one uh, rounds us out uh, this week because this is for GTA 1, or the first one. Um, and it, you still need the, um, the assets, obviously. And it is still... Uh, it is you can sort of kind of play it but it's not complete yet and you can just start the um the game in a specific level if you just want to have a bit of a look at it and all the the uh, the cheats and uh debug modes are enabled by default so it is very much a work in progress mm. but it's there and it's the original gta uh I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, why is there's a unless, unless I'm horribly misremembering something, you can get Rockstar just gave it away. You can just yeah, get yeah. yeah free. There's no demo unless you're just like I yeah. want to play the demo. I, I, I think I think it's GTA one and two that are available just okay. for download. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually played a lot of GTA now. 2 on PC. <laughs> that that game, I have a lot of fun memories attached to it. I liked the first Odd one. I didn't like the second one so much. Mm. Oddly enough, oddly enough, this is another project that's not using the SDL2. Nope. It, it yeah. is being developed fully under Linux. Uh, the guy's screenshot is from an Ubuntu desktop. Yeah, we, we nice. see your deluge uh, drop. Brad, yeah, I know what's <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's he's seeding ISOs. That's totally exactly, nothing and that's why I would like to think of for seeding Linux ISOs. Indeed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, uh, you heard the interview about from the man, so now we're going to put it to the test. Indivisible faces the Chairquisition. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora Solis and Dubuan. And then, and only then, can the question be asked. This is fun. This week we're taking a look at Indivisible from Lab Zero Games, help ported by Humble and Cybek, who was previously on this show. You can go watch the interview and the full thing if you're just watching the standalone interview. Engines, the Z engine. It's not the Z engine, Cybek. It's the Z engine because you're from <laughs> Canada. Talk like it. Um, you can pick it up for um, about 40 bucks. It's pretty expensive in Canada. It's almost 60. Uh, what is it? Indivisible is a hand-drawn action RPG platform from Lab Zero, creators of the critically acclaimed Skull Girls set in a huge fantasy world. Indivisible tells, tells the story of Anya, a fearless girl with a rebellious streak who sets out on a quest to save everything she knows from being destroyed, or at least preserved in her brain. Uh, Lab Zero sent us some keys, so thank you very much for that. Let us begin. How did it work on Dubuen? Oh, better Dubuen. Man, over here on Debian Stale 10.1 with the Threadripper. That's a 1920x, 32 gigajoules of RAM, 2060 for the video, and displayed at 3840 by 2160. Solid 60. No issues there. Fair warning. It does say this. Uh, you, if you only have 8 gigs of RAM, you're going to need 8 gigs of swap. Go watch the interview and find out reasons behind that. Graphics, no glitches. Everything's working fine. No, um, full screen. Didn't it? Uh, no, I didn't even try windowed mode. One thing I was very happy to report, and I can report, is correct button prompts with the PS4 controller and the x controller. That's really nice to see. Really happy about that. So, yeah, man, if you have Debian 10, no worries, man. You, you can just rock that out with uh, four chairs. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3064 bit with the i7-6700K with the Spectre mitigations turned on. And the GTX 1080 Ti, it does, in fact, launch out of the box uh holds about 60 fps um at uhd which is pretty cool graphics it has like a weird mexican indian mongolian vibe with some animu and I'm, I'm into it yeah controls uh all the buttons work on the dual shock um the interface is something i'll get to in the fun section but everything works fine so i will give it four chairs <laughs> look at him jump i did the exact same fucking thing <laughs> Yeah, uh, the platforming, but we'll get to that. Uh, 
<laughs> over here in uh, Solus uh, with the 3700X and the GTX 1080, it holds uh, 60 at 2160. And on El Cheapo, uh, it uh, also holds 60 at 1080p. It's really not a very demanding game. And um, the graphics, well, they're uh, anime as shit, and Razmi is best waifu. The- no questions asked the controls yeah the 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 prompts change uh to match whichever device you last poked with your greasy fingers and the dual shock 4 also worked out of the box so did the steam controller so as far as i'm concerned clean bill of health four chairs yeah t- tiger lady is pretty great can i ask um, you something yeah, um, what? when you first launched this game we were, we were greeted by you know something that's like oh look um, americans made an anime intro which it wasn't bad at all and yeah. mm-hmm. I dug it. Didn't that art style and whoever made that seem like a different team than the ones who did the game? <laughs> a little bit, but little then bit. again, it, it, it's been this is a happen. team that made um, Skullgirls, and that too was anime as shit. So. It, it seemed like there was a little <laughs> bit of disconnect with that intro, which, which was great. Um, I, I mean, it's 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 the whole Thundercats like intro versus the actual cartoon or like He Man, where they get a different company to animate it all. Yeah, it's mm. it, it's a whole thing. Right. All right, well, did you did you have fun with it, Ven? Loved intro it. Loved inconsistency it. aside, hundred uh, percent. Thirty three minutes in, and my working theory. Well, I think like ten minutes in. I don't know what you guys were thinking. It's like, what's going on here? Oh, I think this kid. Uh, no way to get around this minor spoiler. She got a snapped. Her dad got killed to death. And then all of a sudden voices started appearing in her hair, in her hair. Yes. Between her ears. <laughs> and she had auditory visual hallucinations. Therefore the characters that you play in the game that you control, they're in your mind palace, which you can genuinely go to your own mind palace. So that's what I thought about that. Uh, turns out I didn't really like the best way I think to explain it is speed turn-based strategy. I I like that less than your regular turn-based strategy game with this. I mean, it was fun watching Pedro. It was like, wait a minute, I got to hit buttons with this and time then. I was like, Oh no. As I was watching, I was like, I have to do that too. I sucked at it a lot harder than Pedro did. Um, that first 30 minutes, you know, getting the exposition dump, learning the base mechanics, which is like, hey, I think I got this. I'm not immediately getting railroaded. You get decent enough uh, save points laid out throughout the game. So I was like, okay. Then I got to the first, like, golden Uzaru, uh, big golden ape. It's like, all right. Feeling confident. You know, I got myself. I got the uh, boneless tiger lady. And then I got Captain Sword Guy. Yeah, we, we got this. We can handle Nope. <laughs> nope just 30 minutes of just hammering it not getting angry it's like genuinely like I, I can figure this out you know that feeling you get like we can well that's how i play games i'm just like i'm just going to like test my way through this we'll try this we'll try this we'll try this and uh, that was constantly met by fuck off old man so i did see some people in the forums after this complaining that the battle mechanics never clicked for him I clearly fall into that group. Uh, I want to say kudos to Lab Zero for trying something new with that because I'm always on the lookout. I, I don't have any like deep seated hatred for like turn based mechanics, but it's just not my jam. I'm always like, maybe this one's going to be my jam. This one, a lot of platforming in it. I was like, all right, dig that. But as soon as we got to the um, actual fighting, I wanted to like it. My old ass just couldn't understand it. it got killed to death too much. And uh, yeah. If I got to be that guy, because I know there's that guy and that gal out there listening, if turn base, not your jam, it's not going to change your mind. Yeah, so um, the beginning of this story is very clearly a reference to the 1982 masterpiece, Conan the Barbarian. I mean, they even got Worf to vo- vo- voice their uh, Falsa Doom character. And from there on, you take out the role on a lady who sucks people into her brain and forces them to fight for their very survival. Because if she dies, they all die too. There's also a bit about how Falsa Doom thinks she's like the herald to the end times or something. Probably to do with those three weird circle things at the beginning of the game that you had to fight. And I was like, ooh, spooky, scary circles. Anyways, um, so the 
combat system is kind of weird um because like ven like ven said kinda. you have to it's it's a bit of an active time battle thing where <laughs> um you have a number of slots available to each character each one of them has like a mm. fantasy strike style move bound to like a button and an and like the various arrow keys and they'll do different things and you got to combo them in order to um in order to uh defeat enemies and sometimes you need to perform specific combos because they have a guard up so you need to launch them in the air and smack them down otherwise you're just doing one damage at a time and fights take forever and uh some t and yeah sometimes you got to combo three enemy defenses and then on the enemy's turn uh they'll attack one or more of your guys and you gotta either block with all of them which will stop everyone's moves from recharging or pick the right one and block with them like what you see Pedro doing here. Um, it's interesting in theory, but I find in practice it tends to end up being a lot more button mashy than I feel the game designers really want it to be um, because you end up just like, oh, has this thing recharged yet? Spam, 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 spam to get as much damage in before uh, the enemy takes their turn. Um, the, uh, the platforming is kind of there. Um, for something that takes up so much of the game, the platforming elef elements are platforming elephants are kind of a bit <laughs> RNG, um, especially when it comes to like some of the more uh, advanced platforming things you need to do where you need to like jump, catch yourself, jump, shoot an arrow, all that stuff. Um, it doesn't quite work as well as you think it does because you're not very clear where you're going to land and how you're going to ricochet off things. Sometimes your jump is higher than it than you think it normally is so you can make jumps that you would otherwise not be able to it's a little strange um also the ui uh at least for out of combat is a little weird because I, I don't i don't like how the map is you just hold up and then you can see like a little snippet of map um that you have available to you because then if you're lost you don't know where the hell you're going um and the saving thing is kind of weird because you have to hold down a button and then hold the directional key. And that just seems a little needlessly complicated. Um, but the gameplay itself is relatively fun with those minor gripes aside. Uh, the voice acting is pretty good and they got a decent stable of actors, famous and otherwise, to go do oh, yeah. uh, voices for people. Yep. Uh, Matt Mercer's in there. Um, Michael Dorn's in there. Uh, Deborah Wilson from Mad TV's there as well. Um, so that's that's all well done. The writing's sharp enough. Yeah, Ti Tiger Lady has the best lines because she's just like, oh, yeah, nice. just fucking stab him in the Wait brain, light him okay. on fire, okay. eat it, okay, I, eat I, gotta, it. I, I gotta throw in with that. <laughs> do you think her voice direction was like, okay, I need you to to do Janine Garofalo mid nineties hard as you can? There's def there's definitely quite a bit of that. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. Uh. But it it's 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 a good time. Although there are a couple moments where like. They, they do an okay job of like putting save points where after you've done like a super complicated platforming segment they're like save here so you don't have to do that again but then there's a boss fight where you don't have that and it's super annoying because mm -hmm. if you die on one of the unfair platforming segments you got to start from the very fucking beginning and mm -hmm. I, at that point i was just like let's let's not let's not do that um but i'll i'll give it a solid three cheers it's a well put together game it's well presented yeah, oh, yeah. Three. it absolutely oh, is oh, here we go Check it out. And um, yeah, five hours in and only now has someone explained like what is uh, protagonist person Ajna, uh, what her background is. And uh, this is in and around the point that you start to unlock the fast travel system. That's when you get access to the ship and that's when you start getting like the waypoints so that you can attune yourself to them and move around the world. Uh, yeah, I still... I still haven't locked the abilities to get through the places that have the green particles and the um, the orange particles. I have no idea what I need to do to get through to those. And when I saw how much this game cost, I was about to tear it a new one uh, because it's like, holy crap, that's 40 pounds. W what the hell are they doing to justify 40 pounds? And well... This is a huge fucking game. That's what they're doing. Uh, yeah, it is. I can absolutely see the cost justification and some something tells me that there's going to be even more stuff to do and probably a bunch of optional bits from all the places that you can see up in the distance, but you can't really reach at that time. So, uh, yeah, th there's a lot of stuff in there. And the way that the story kind of starts out, it sort of reminds me of um, Final Fantasy X. Granted, 
you know, Final Fantasy X is not the best of the bunch. Final Fantasy, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not the best of the bunch. Uh, but then again, it's not the worst. Final Fantasy IX is still around after all. Uh, come at me. Uh, the big difference here is that Indivisible is two D. It's um. The combat is a bit more active than most other turn-based games, Final Fantasy ones included. And it took a couple of hours of play for my brain to click. And I guess a uh, big thanks to Lock Donan for the um, Steam Controller, because it was using the Steam Controller that my brain finally clicked and I found the uh, little nubbin that constitutes my right thumb actually hitting the correct buttons at the right time. So... Once it clicked, uh, even the occasional, like, difficulty spike became rather minor. And the game, as a result, became very enjoyable. Still expensive as balls, though. Three chairs. All right, well, there you go. It's pretty solid, all things considered. You should definitely check it out and give these guys some of your hard-earned money. They put a lot of work into oh, yes. it, and yeah, like, p p honestly, like, a lot of the cost it has to do with, like, the insane level of production quality that's present yeah. in this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it genuinely makes me happy when I see crowdfunding that get a legitimately good product from. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I at any point, you know, I didn't, like, the mechanics of the game but you can even i can see it's like this is well done mm -hmm. so good on you lot 100 percent. and yep. it's huge the game itself is huge uh the areas as you start there are so many like optional areas that you can't get into it's like oh i kind of want to go there you know that's my jam <laughs> like right off the bat as soon as you start the game you're like oh there's gonna be some backtracking so if you're into that yeah. I'm not <laughs> but hey man it is there lot lots to do lots to do indeed it, it it's a very interesting rpg metroidvania platformer hybrid and it, it it doesn't hit all the marks that it sets out to do but it does it well enough that it's a solid product all right so coming up next people have more questions about pedro's computer so he's just gonna blather on and on and on and on yeah i, I know i keep saying that it's been a long show but i know for a it's fact been that a it's been a long show, show. <laughs> yes yes it has and chances are we probably said something or cybic Civic. Civic said something that uh, you probably didn't agree with, or maybe you even have uh, some extra questions for him. Feel free to uh, go out over to linuxgamecast.com, plop those questions in the forum, just make sure you nope. pick LGC Weekly from the little show box. If you're a game developer and uh, much like Civic, you'd like to throw us some keys uh, to have a look at your game, do like him, include three, because if not, well, it's not going to end well for you. Just well, saying. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> it, it was like definitely one of the things, uh, a little behind the scenes, you know, Civic is like, yo, man, guess what these are? Those three <laughs> keys. It was like, three keys to the Epic Store. <laughs> <laughs> See, that that would have been the ultimate F you. <laughs> that, that would have been great, man. No, but we do have a big, chunky, chunky one that, you know, everyone's going to have an opinion on this one from Miss Geek. Who writes, uh, this is on Pedro's gaming PC topic. It's like, hey, man, what about the NVIDIA GPU? Because, you, you know, you went AMD with this build. Yep. It's like right on. <laughs> uh, and just to piss people off, you chose Intel for the CPU. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> she writes, I need a beast of an editing PC. And editing PCs and gaming PCs are specced pretty close to each other. How would you say they diverge? I haven't specced out a computer in a long freaking time. Well, uh, the big one is the CPU, because for gaming, uh, my reasoning for that one is like cheapest quad core I can get. Mm -hmm. And that was the 3470. Uh, and depending on what kind of software you're using, and Fen will, will tell you about that, uh, you may also want a GPU with like at least eight gigs of uh, a video RAM. If you're doing editing, it may be worth the extra cash to also go with something that has more core is on the cpu like the ryzen 5 1600 it has um 
six cores, uh, 12 threads. It's like $80 right now. It, it It is a very good deal. And for GPUs, yeah, like I said, anything with eight gigs or more was probably what you are going to look at. And you're going to want more storage. But at that point, you're looking more at, at least 600 pounds instead of 300 pounds like I spec this one out to be. So, yeah, it's... Uh, you can do it with AMD. Uh, OpenCL is great, and the RX 570s and 580s and 590s have uh, eight gigabyte variants, so those are very much uh, a good idea, I suppose. How 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 is the open source OpenCL though? Because I know a lot of people are recommending to use the. Um, uh, AMD GPU Pro drivers, if you're going to be doing anything like that. Oh, that's that's the only thing you'll be using. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that's, that's definitely. What, what are your thoughts? I mean, Jordan, I mean, when you spec out a gaming rig, is that like your primary thing? That was like it must game first and foremost. Um, general generally, I I kind of compose a list of like these these are the main things I want. Either like um like a like a certain CPU, a certain amount of RAM. Uh, video card. I my, my my PC building style is weird because generally I'll cannibalize a lot of parts from the old computer, like the GPU, at least at first, and throw it into the new system. So I I tend to build systems with the maximum amount of modularity upgradeability in mind. Um, so I I make my decision this is accordingly there. Like I paid three hundred dollars for this motherboard because it had a second NVMe port. I'm like I'm probably gonna get two. And by the t and that didn't happen by the time I built a new computer, so you know that's that's kind of the double edged sword of that. <laughs> but then you got to think about it. when you bought that two NVMe, it was like that was not a common thing to find. It's it still isn't. Yeah, it's really you, it, that that yeah, that's still a premium thing if you want that second NVMe port on the motherboard. On like consumer grade, um, yes, on consumer grade. Oh, we're talking about yeah. peasant boards. Yeah, yeah peasant it's not threadripper boards, not workstation yeah. level motherboards with RGBs. Well, in all fairness, I paid less than three hundred bucks for this one. Ooh, <laughs> used baby. Old man Vin can spend money wisely. Um, if you're looking for an editing rig, this is something I wrote back um, to Miss Geek was. You would think that because it does make logical sense. And I know a lot of people have said that is like, hey, man, if you do a good, you know, if I'm looking for an editing rig, what are the gamers using? And that might be the best thing. Now, I will say this. Pedro, you you have the new Ryzen, which is, uh, what was it? 3700X. 3700X. Now, if we're just going blow for blow for IPC, especially in games that are going to do good to hit four threads you're gonna kick my butt with my 1920x thread ripper same goes for jordan with your intel which is you know what it's sky intel. lake it was a li the last big bump for intel yeah, i was about to say it's <laughs> intel so what's it's only like 70 generations in the past three years <laughs> right um same deal when it comes to gaming however this is the first time it was interesting to build thread booper because this is a purpose-built computer uh when it comes to rendering and encoding and doing what we're doing right now just as simple as something any, anyone can play at home take a simple file and handbrake it i will murder it you bitches just it wouldn't yeah. even be a contest <laughs> we've looked at the um multi-thread scores on geekbench with uh you have and, eight cores 12 threads wait no eight cores. yeah and i got about thirty-eight thousand something on uh on geekbench 4 yeah. and you got like forty two thousand or forty four thousand something like that ten thousand more <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it, it is a significant difference and yeah if you're doing editing you kind of want the extra threads <laughs> that's 100 percent what you're looking for is you know how quick can i get my turnaround done and you're also looking for things like i need stoop things i've had to learn i'm like geez i'm gonna buy another nvme drive and like yes you are I'm like but i'm gonna put it off for a while so eat dick <laughs> three nvme slots that's what you're looking for and it's hedt stuff you know intel's got their own brand that which their new i9 stuff is 
not completely mooned price. They're like, oh no, we got to compete against the AMD. <laughs> oh, 50% what? price right. cut. <laughs> so you're looking at that, you're looking at PCI stuff for your editing rig. It depends on what type of ad. If you're just doing videos, man, just buy whatever. But if you need something like, oh, I need to shove three capture cards capable of doing 1080p60 in there and another one on top of that. And especially with video cards, if you're running Windows or if you're running Linux, if you're primarily doing like 3D stuff, I'm going to say don't buy a Quadro for home use. Yeah, I know. That, that, that's just burning money for no reason. Look for something, you know, I went for the 2060. That was a good bang for the buck for what we needed for. You know, it had enough CUDA cores. I don't, I don't care about RTX, the Tensor stuff, but it does what I need to do. Like my next upgrade for the 2060 is a 2070 Super. It's not a... 2080 ti or um any of the rtx quadro series but keep that in mind if you're going to get an amd card the only thing i would recommend getting would be uh radiant 7. 7 yeah good yeah. luck finding one because amd is like uh we're not going to make that but you only made it for three weeks two and a half weeks right? and get it right <laughs> and so the prices on those i i was like secretly sitting back watching as i do from afar because i'm patient and that's how i get a good deal i'm not looking to buy something right then it's like let that get down to about 500 bucks it's like no no such luck wah, wah. so hopefully that confused you more than you started off with and we've done our job <laughs> right maybe <laughs> sounds about right yeah yeah Pretty much. 100%. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure someone who started watching the show right at the top is very confused at this point. Um, there, 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 there's a little bit of out of order, like Pulp Fiction sequencing happening. Oh, uh, hard mode. Anyway, let's sequence ourselves. I probably the said something Ladies at some gentlemen. point that I actually didn't. Boys and girls, <laughs> thanks for showing up. If you want to scream at me, you know where I'm at. I'm on Twitter. I'm just at Vin Stone. Hang it out there. We can have a conversation. If you want to have a long conversation, hop in Discord or IRC or something like that. I'm not arguing with you on the internet. Don't confuse me with Pedro. That's the thing. All right. <laughs> I'm Jordan Svung. You can find me on the internet, King of John Travolta's car and murdering people with swords at the Burning Fool on Twitter or at Frojo at our mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. And you can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4. I am Pedro Mateos and... Honestly, just, just, yeah, just yeah, Twitter. Yeah. Just, I, just follow. I, I was going to say, man, I thought every time I think I got Portuguese down, he throws me a curveball. I don't even know. <laughs> was that feminine or masculine? C. C. <laughs> Idios, amigos. We're going to roll the credits and thank the beautiful patrons who make this show possible. As soon as I find oh. the button. Ta da! Buttons! I mean, a bricked SD card will cause nuclear war. That's the thing. Look at all the <laughs> lovely SD people. Cards That's an intro look, at them. <laughs> look at them. Guys like... That's our executive uh, producer. Arthurin and Mr. Foxdog and Khemti and Atomic Ass and Nickel G and Barbram Pablo, Aldeus, Mac Scoots, Scoots, the rumor. And the lovely producers, producers, producing uh, all of Mr. us. Mango. <laughs> we get Igor. There's Mir in there. Uh oh. Simka. Oh, and we got we got no we got Twitch subs. is now following. That Thank actually you, no happened XM. when I was recording the credits, so it stays. Um. Nice. <laughs> Gonzo 2000, <laughs> Basil, <laughs> Sorceress, Jago, Rutnog, Linux Nero, Adrian, and the fuckos. And the wall Mike of G fucks. and Maddie and Linux Nero. upstanding cannibals they are. Frank, Frank Warren, Bradley, Hi, Jill and Jingle Steve, Frank. Steve-O, Litras.net, Dan W, Era 20, John M, Mr. Red Cloinka, at the Admiral JT, Mir and um, Mag, Ryan M, J, Eternal J, Cardboard, Joey Bean, and Haplo. Cardboard is eternal. Dude, <laughs> cardboard it's corrugated, I think. No, well, I kind of Br corrugated. No, that, that's, that's Bristol board, so that's not cor cor corrugated. Eh. Corrugated. Cor 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 we got a corrugate. Nah, dude, it is like some jacked up poor little dog. It's like, <laughs> no, oh. it, listen, it's it's a political scandal involving a corgi. It's corgi gate. Have you smoked yourself retarded? No, it don't is call that me time that. of night. <laughs> don't call me a retard. That's rude. I didn't. You did. Died to fight everyone. We'll see you next week.
five dudes. 